Welcome back to Folk Heaven All in Estonia. We're here in Tallinn for this year's Olympic Summer Festival where the action is really hotting up. But before we return to those tables, let's find out a little bit more about poker in the Baltics. I'm joined now by Preet Pahuma, who is the corporate poker manager um, here at the casino, as well as a few other casinos, is that right? Yeah, we have casinos in Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania. We have casinos in Ukraine and Belarus as well, but uh, no poker rooms there yet. So how much poker is shown on TV in Estonia? Yeah, Estonia has three national TV channels mm -hmm. and uh, if they mention something about poker sometimes, it's good. But <laughs> nothing's shown in Estonian nothing. TV, totally nothing. But Estonia has wide access to cable TV and uh, from there you, you know yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So are poker players from the Baltics better than poker players from Scandinavia? Um, Finns, Estonians, uh, they're all pretty uh, conservative players and uh, when we have a tournament of uh, Norwegians here, then, uh, uh, and as we uh, discussed with one partner uh, yesterday, that uh, also uh, Irish players mm -hmm. are very at, uh, they are attacking all the time, and so the tournaments are short, even without any matter which flying structure or anything you have. But Estonians are um, pretty conservative and don't really take too many risks. Who, in your opinion, is the best poker player to come out of the sport? Yeah, of course, uh, Latvia has enormously big potential because uh, uh, there are very many new players coming up there and very high level, high skilled players and uh, they have a good potential and they have an advantage. They can start playing for a live poker in a year, uh, in age 18. Uh, in Estonia there are very many uh, uh, this that's a very high level players already who have started just two years ago playing poker at all maybe and uh, several players who have very good experience like Imre Leibold, uh, uh, Marek Koelk, uh, Henry Gasper and several, uh, several more. In your opinion, what is the greatest aspect of poker? Oh, it's a game, it's a game of skills, it's a game of analyse, it's a game of uh, psychology and a bit game of luck also. So, yeah, uh, yeah, but it's, a, it's not the biggest factor. So you can uh, just try to challenge and uh, uh, try how good you are. Just reading the mind, and uh, yeah. if you succeed, you, you can Im imagine the feeling of that. So this is what the chip counts look like going into the final table. Local boys Alexander and Mary must find a way to double up early if they're going to stand a chance of staying in the tournament. With over 25,000 chips, more than his closest rival, Norwegian Jettel Hove sits comfortably in pole position and will attempt to take control from the very beginning. I caught up with him just before the final table was about to begin. Uh, and I finally nabbed you because you've yeah. been avoiding me all yesterday. I finally got him here. I was concentrating all the time. Okay, I'll let you off. How was yesterday? It was a little bit hard because I was short stack all the time, but finally after I got ace queen versus ace seven, I started building stack, and uh, afterwards it was good. So what about now? How, how's your stack? Is it above average? Uh, it's uh, the biggest stack. I'm the chip leader. Ah, uh, you're the fellow with the biggest stack. Yeah. You're the one that everyone's going to try and yeah. steal your chips. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. And have you got um, any kind of style tonight? Yeah, I'm going to go gonna... aggressive. Yeah, Very just go aggressive. straight in at the beginning? Yeah. How long do you think you guys are going to be playing for? I don't know, three hours maybe, three, yeah, yeah, three or four. Three hours. Are you looking forward to tonight? Yes, of course, I'm short stacked, but uh, let's see, maybe luck turns to me. And what's, what's going to be your style of play this evening? Uh, are you going to be aggressive? I don't think so, I, I'm going to be tight and uh, yeah. looking forward, my best hand. Okay, how was yesterday? Uh, I, yesterday uh, I had a very big luck because uh, I, I had 2,000 uh, chips uh, when the blind was uh, 200 and 400 mm. and uh, now I'm uh, playing on the final table, it's very good. Very <laughs> exciting. How do you feel? Do you feel nervous? So, uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe, yes. Yeah, excited? Yes. Yeah, yeah. How would you feel if you won? Hi, I'm really lucky. <laughs> Big smile. So, 56 become 10, 
And it's that moment that every poker player dreams of, a seat at the final table and a chance of winning that grand prize. No sooner had play commenced when Mary Dorbeck was left to ruin his aggressive stance as he exited in 10th position, taking home just over 800 euros. As play continued, Alexander Mehenkov decided to make a stand and pushed his short stack in with his connecting cards. His courage proved fruitful as his opponent's pocket pair was left drawing dead after a straight was born on the flop. Three consecutive all-ins later, the big Estonian had almost trebled his chips and against the odds become a worthy challenger. The short stacks seemed to take heed as they began gunning for the chip leader, who was left helpless when his pocket aces were cracked as the turn revealed a lady, giving Nereus from Lithuania two pair. How's your friend doing? Uh, he's doing okay. It's a very tough table and he doesn't have that too many chips and... Uh, at the, early, at the start there were some short stacks and they were supposed to go out and now table dynamics have changed completely. Some surprising plays I've seen. It's, now it's yeah, tough. Yeah, there's been some aggressive play, yeah. hasn't there? Now it's tough. Anybody can win, I think. Next out was Jarl Lund, whose pocket threes could not hold up against Alexander's continuing hot streak. Nereus's growing confidence was left shattered as his once flourishing stack was crushed to five and a half thousand after a questionable all-in with pocket twos. But, as the saying goes, all you need is a chip and a chair, and maybe a bit of luck. Trip sixes on the deck, taking another slice from Yettel's once great chip lead. The Norwegian's fortunes were not to improve as he exited the tournament in seventh position, collecting just over 1,100 euros. I started aggressive. I went out raising, got re-raised a lot of times. I went down from 100,000 to 80,000. Then I got this hand aces on the big blind, and he has queen 10. Oh. He paired the 10, and he calls, and there's a queen on the turn. I play perfectly. Yeah. I did. Just the cards. Yeah, it was the cards. I think it's the best tournament I've played for a long time, very long time. Remaining players began to fall by the wayside as the ever-increasing blinds started to take their toll. First out was the ever-bubbly Swede, who was shortly followed by Paul Christensen from Norway. Are you um, happy with your play? Um, no, everything but the last time. I shouldn't ever involve myself in that. So, one bad play and an out. As play began to slow down, we took the opportunity to move away from the tables and discover exactly what Tallinn had to offer. I'm here in the Old Town, which is situated in the heart of Tallinn, a World Heritage Site to which tourists flock for a taste of medieval Estonia. Now, the Old Town is separated into two different developments. Tumpea, the dome hill which overlooks the city, and the lower town, the entrance to which is just behind me. So with cobbled streets, medieval churches and a historic past, there's plenty to do to keep you busy. So, let's take a look around. Side alleys, inner courtyards, market stalls, restaurants and artisans' workshops encircle the old town, creating a medieval atmosphere within a modern-day Estonia. After glancing through the many woolly outfits and considering the scorching temperatures, I decided to make my way up the hill. The Gothic Town Hall building is one of the most famed symbols of the city, treasured throughout Estonia for its unique architectural design. Perched on top of the building is a weather vane in the shape of a soldier known as Old Thomas and is one of the best loved symbols of the capital. The square in front of Tallinn's Town Hall has functioned as a marketplace for centuries and has served the town throughout the years as the centre of celebrations. The Knights Tournament, the election of the May Count, open air concerts and the annual Christmas tree are only some of the year long festivities. Tumpei is situated on top of the steep limestone coast and is home to the Alexander Nevsky Cathedral, an Orthodox church built during a period when the country was part of the Russian Empire. Tumpei Castle has throughout the centuries provided a vital military stronghold and was much sought after by various conquering nations. To befit the medieval atmosphere within the walls, tourists are offered the opportunity to try their hand at archery. A natural, I was not. So, after a very short tour of the old town here in Tallinn, I'm sure you can appreciate just how beautiful this country is. OK, 
Okay, so it's level 16. We're down to our final four. And nobody wants to leave as everybody is out for that top prize of over 125,000 ek. After being carded for the majority of the final table, local player Laurie Teelam had to make do with fourth place as his walking sticks were kicked from under his feet. And it wasn't long before we were heads up as Alexander pushed his chips across the line before being called by an overpair to the board. The once diminutive stack of the Lithuanian had now grown into a 4-1 to one chip lead against his fellow countryman David Kak, who after managing a quick double up thanks to his eight kicker reverted back to his usual tight style of play. With a lot of money riding on their decisions, neither could afford to make any mistakes. And it wasn't until aces were dealt to both players that the chips finally made their way into the middle. Nereus, holding his third ace king of the night, went on to win and was crowned the Olympic Summer Festival main event champion. Uh, he has, of course, won the tournament, so congratulations, very you, well done, it's very you. exciting at the end. Thank Are you very pleased? What? Are you very happy? Yes, of course, I'm very happy. I had uh, about 5,500 uh, at the final table uh, and uh, I win the tournament. Uh, it's amazing, <laughs> it amazing. amazing. I saw your chip stack and it was like, it was like yes, that. Yes, it was 5,500. Yeah. Did you think that you were going to win or were you I had No, unsure? absolutely no, absolutely no. <laughs> yeah, I had very big luck. Yeah. <laughs> very big. Good stuff. And what are you going to spend your money on? <laughs> and all, all of those tournaments. Another tournament, down the line. Summer. Okay. Well, we wish you good luck for your further tournament and congratulations today. Thank you. And thank you for speaking thank to you us. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> It was a story of David and Goliath as, through luck and pure determination, the short stacks fought their way to the top. Congratulations to Nereus and all our finalists who made this a unique and treasured tournament. The main event champion lifts his trophy as he celebrates his achievement and first prize of over 8,000 euros. Eight nations competed in this tournament and a champion has been crowned. Nereus from Lithuania, congratulations to him. But that's all the action we have time for from the Olympic Summer Festival, so we shall see you next time. Goodbye.